OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jen Griffin. I am the DLAC lead and GED teacher and lead teacher for Marina Valley Community Adult School. And we're excited to be here today to present um, our project, our mid-year review for bridging the pharmacy tech gap. Before I introduce the rest of the team, I do want to tell you in the chat, I just put the link to a Google Doc, and it will take you to all of the links that you will, you'll see as we go through our presentation. So you can go and explore those on your own time. Um, our team members include uh, Dr. Patricia Bizzano, our principal, uh, Lolita Anderson, our ESL teacher and ESL department chair. She's here presenting with me today. Uh, Cynthia Canchola is our CTE pharmacy tech teacher. She is not here, but she worked in partnership and collaboration with us as we kind of went through this whole process. And then I am also joined by uh, Jennifer McGrath, our GED teacher and lead teacher. Oops. Go ahead and do the next slide for me because I can't change it. <laughs> um, a little bit about our agency. Uh, Marina Valley offers adult basic education classes, English as a second language, high school diploma, um, high school equivalency or GED in our career tech ed uh, department. Currently, we have 696 students enrolled in a virtual, 100% virtual um, program. Prior to the COVID pandemic, we averaged about 1,000 students who would come to an either morning or an afternoon evening session. Um, and then COVID hit and we had to pivot. So prior to COVID, we, we were 100% face-to-face. We had two programs, a high school diploma online and a um, GED online section that, that was sort of hybrid, but not really. That, those were the only two programs that we had that had any type of online component. The pandemic required that all of us really just pivoted and did everything that we were doing in the face-to-face -face instruction and, and turning, turning it into a technology-based uh, setting, which, which was a lot. So this DLAC course that we took with Destiny Simpson and Dr. Porter and our coaches and OTAN, um, it really helped us address these issues and rethink how we were going to do this as we move forward. And we'll get more onto that in just a minute. And so to introduce um, our pharmacy technician program, we have had this uh, program in existence in our school for the past three years. Um, it is a nine month course internship and includes an internship in which where the students actually go out into the pharmacy um, uh, in the pharmacies and learn more about and get on the job site experience and towards their hours for total certification. Uh, in order to be in this program, they have to have a high school diploma or equivalency and a balanced social security number. And upon completion of this program, they are able to earn their immunization certification, which is um, where they're able to actually give shots in the pharmacies, which is helping out in the wake of the COVID situation. And as well as they get their uh, state board certification for to be a pharmacy tech. And it is good for the state of California. And there's also an, um, a national board equivalency of this as well, where they can go and travel um, to different states to be able to work as a pharmacy tech. Yeah, and here's some pictures of some of our students and this is pre-COVID, so that's why they don't have their masks on. So these pictures were taken pre-COVID and um, you can see here is and outside of our classrooms uh, some of our cohort students and we have students that are practicing learning how to take the, do their measurement of their counts of their medications and as well as how to weigh the different uh, medications for compound medications where they have to put um, different ones together. So this is part of their training and they do on site in the class that they take this experience out into the field. And part of our um, reason for doing this, we offer this course here in place because um, there is a high demand for pharmacy technicians in the, in the area. And especially the next two years, there is a projection of at least 2000 uh, pharmacy tech positions that will need to be filled in the area. And this is for the Riverside and San Bernardino County area. So there is a great need for um, this particular entry level job um, for our students. And with that being said, and because of the, um, the fact that 
there is gonna be a greater demand for helping out our medical offices and helping to provide vaccinations, our pharmacy techs can be certified to give those shots as well in the pharmacies. And this is a picture of one of our students down here who actually graduated from our program and she works in the field. Um, and um, just a little quick story, she was the one who gave my husband his second um, vaccine shot. So just about a month ago, that was pretty neat to have one of our pharma students giving a shot to my husband. That was pretty cool. So, and um, how, so basically what we're doing to help our pharmacy technician program is that in working in collaboration with our um, pharmacy teacher, um, she has identified some skill areas where we need to help to grow um, our enrollment in the pharmacy tech program. We need to help our students to have to bridge these gaps. And so we decided to create what's called a bridge course. And in doing this bridge course, we've identified um, five gap areas that will help our students before they make the transition to go into the actual um, pharmacy tech program. Um, so what this is, we are developing a, co a customer service course so they can learn a little bit about what it's like to be behind the counter and the communication skills and, some, and whatnot. And they will also have better background in medical terminology, anatomy, and physiology, and as well as um, strengthening their skills in math and what the areas of medical mathematics that they need for this particular course. And it's also going to align a lot more closely with our CASAS math test. And the last component is our computer and digital literacy skills, where we need to help strengthen students' skills and working with the computers because they're going to be online doing the computers quite a bit, and as well as working with the the pharmacy techs, the software that is, is being run in the pharmacies. And so I'm gonna take it off to you, Jen. So like many agencies, when COVID hit, we saw a decline in our enrollment and be it, they were scared of technology. They weren't sure how a class was gonna work. They weren't sure how they were gonna be able to do school when they couldn't come to the site. Um, we did see a drop, but to combat that, we, we recruited heavily on social media and our website to get students enrolled and get them and ready to go. To enroll and recruit students for this pharmacy tech class, we plan to do class visits, be it virtual or in-person, depending on how the fall um, rolls out in, in 2021. Our counselors are speaking to um, interested students as well as teachers and former students who went through the CTE program are coming back and talking to students who could be potentially interested to kind of recruit them towards it. Um, we, we also noticed that we had some gaps in our, our students' digital literacy skills as far as how are we going to do school. Like all of you, when we pivoted to Zoom and online instruction, we, we really did struggle um, getting students into the site, how to get to Google Classroom, how to log into a Zoom. And there were several hours of myself and other teachers sitting down with students one-on-one -on -one going through how to do that. So to mitigate some of the frustration experienced by students and by teachers, we put together this technology orientation website. It's also on that Google Doc that I just sent you. And here it houses just some basic how-to videos, how to log into school accounts, Google, the ins and outs of Google Classroom. Um, and, and we use this just as a reference for teachers and staff alike to to reference and then they could give this website link to their students and it's also synced to our school website. Um, if you don't have YouTube, if you're not using it, I, I encourage you to. There's a lot of great stuff in here. Um, but what something that we are most proud about is not only did we make these as a staff for our, for our teachers and students to use, but some of our students took the initiative and decided that they were gonna help out. So with that, Lola, could you please talk about these student created tutorials? Yes, of course. So by now you are fully aware that digital literacy is a valuable tool for lifelong learning. So once you get your adult language learners to buy in, you know, it's important that you're conscious of the devices that they're using. And that brings us to the student created tutorial. So I got my students to buy in and I had over students, uh, over 30 students joined on Zoom. As soon as I asked the students to use the annotation tools, I had uh, students asking for help. I realized I was helping them based on the device I was on. <clears throat> Other students were trying to get, you know, trying to help based on the devices they were on. So, so one thing uh, before, uh, before this 
uh, Zoom chaos, uh, you know, turned into Zoom chaos, um, I thought, you know, we all know how to use YouTube, right? Yes. Okay. So I asked the students to open up a new tab and, um, and basically search for uh, tutorials based on the device that they're on. So we use Burlington English, you know, we're on Zoom and we use uh, Google Classroom. So they started searching and I couldn't copy and paste uh, from the chat fast enough. I mean, students caught on how to copy and paste onto the document that I was using. And so the next thing you know, it became a collective effort and it was just very empowering for both uh, for, for the students and um, extremely helpful and it's okay that we have dupes because every student's effort is in there and um that's yeah that's my testimony and i believe we're moving on to screening and requires uh scores with jennifer mcgrath yes um so with that um and just a little uh, sidebar lolita teaches our esl program is her esl students that created all those tutorials so just wanted to give you a big shout out on that, but I was really proud of that for your cell program. And um, so now moving on and making that transition to screening. So when thinking about how are we going to select our students to be part of this bridge program and where what uh, this is are what are the type of students we're looking for for this bridge course that we can help better service them and give them a spark of their interest in wanting to go into the pharmacy tech field. And so we are looking at our test scores. For the ABE and ASE students, um, we wanted to target the uh, low for the reading scores or low adult secondary education interest levels five and six. And, and also, we are going to go down to as low as the NRS level four, five, and six in the math, with the consideration that we are going to be providing a much more intervention in the uh, module in the medical math module for the course we will be providing a lot more interventions to help fill in those gaps because most of our students may have high literacy but may not have as high level in skills in math. It, it could be because of the literacy gaps that there may be. So that's something that we wanna take into consideration. And then of course, for our ESL students, we will be looking at targeting the ESL students that are in the NRS level six advanced level. And keeping in mind that these students will be probably in their current ABE, ESL classes, and also maybe doing um, their GED classes or high school diploma classes and are finishing them up. And they may take this bridge course at the same time. So it's kind of like a natural transition for them to have a goal setting of, oh, okay, I'm interested in the, in the pharmacy tech, but I want to get my skills ready to go to that level. So we're looking at this student population here to help tie in that. And then they hope the goal is to have them when they're finished with their ESL and ABE classes, and this bridge course, they're ready to make that transition to enroll the actual pharmacy tech program and continue their pathway into a job. And so how do we bridge this gap? Lolita. Burlington English uh, is an online learning management system the ESL department uses and also credits uh, for increasing ESL CASAS test scores. So these students are uh, meeting their benchmarks, uh, payment points, um, but Burlington English also has a career readiness uh, courses. And one of those CTE courses is pharmacy technician. So um, having said that, our hope here at the Moreno Valley Community Adult School is to be in collaboration with Burlington English, you know, and get permission to integrate their curriculum, supplemental, uh, supplemental material slash worksheets and embed them into, you know, some of our uh, five modules that we're offering in intro to pharmacy. So um, I believe that uh, and, um, gets us to our next on. slide. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I, I just wanted to add on to that um, as well. And is that in addition to using Burlington English as one of our resources with just the, the, the Barbie Tech soft skills component of it, we are also going to be blending in a variety of resources of curriculum. We're going to be using the actual Barbie Tech curriculum to build in for the medical, for the term, um, um, for the anatomy and physiology, and as well as for the um, the medical mathematics components, we'll be using Aztec sources and, and a variety of other teacher created resources. So it's going to be a blended um, of a variety of curriculum for these modules. And then with that, the whole goal is that um, we're looking at some outcomes, uh, hopeful outcomes here for this is to. The main idea is to increase and sustain enrollment in the pharmacy tech program. We want to expand that and create more enrollment for this course. 
and also, of course, to support the increasing job market demand for pharmacy technicians in the Inland Empire region, which includes the city of Moreno Valley. And um, with this in mind, we're hoping to expand our medical pathways and build further bridge courses to create and expand our medical pathways into medical billing and coding. Phlebotomy, we do have a phlebotomy um, program on our campus. We want to bridge, uh, do a create bridge course with that program as well. Um, and for hopefully a, a future medical assistant program in the future. And what one of the things that we would like to be able to do is because this is such a new and very unique adventure is that after we have piloted this course in the fall, this fall we're going to be piloting this course and um, over the next year through refinements and evaluations and seeing how it works and, and everything. We're going to use the Moodle platform to create this course and put it in there. So we have a shell that we're going to be working with and we're going to build the course in there. And um, after it's all said and done over the next year, after this second year of our cohort, we would like to put this out on the public domain and put it out there and offer it um, for other adult education agencies across the country to have access to it to see if it's something that could be helpful for their programs as well. So kind of giving back to the community what we have gained from our DLAC program. Um, we wanna give something back. So this is, this is a very exciting venture that we'll be doing. And Jen. So the long and the short of it, I know we're running low on time. So the DLAC process and the OTAN course without this program and these courses, we wouldn't be here today presenting to you about the uh, bridging the pharmacy tech gap. We wouldn't be able to do that. To date, we have, developed our orientation materials. And we have, we've worked it into our master schedule for fall of 2021. Um, this whole process assisted us in developing our leadership and presentation styles and communication styles. And the work that Dr. Porter provided allowed us to really see where our strengths were and um, different areas of, of ways we needed to approach tasks. And then all of our DLAC trainings allowed us to learn and network with other adult agencies and pull ideas together because, you know, it's really better to use more than one brain, right? The, the smartest person in the room is really the room. So that's really how DLAC and OTAN assisted us. Jen, if you could move it on to the next. There you go. Sorry. So a special thanks to Dr. Porter, Destiny Simpson, Netta, Penny, and all of OTAN support staff, and a special shout out to Coach Susan Greer. The development of this course would not be possible. And ideally, these resources provided uh, valuable insights to what we need to consider and how we can build this course from the ground up. So thank you so much from the Marina Valley Adult School team.